Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let us continue our discussion. So, today we are going to solve a few examples and uh, we will show you how to um, evaluate the response of a system uh, which is having only 1 degrees of freedom and it is excited by uh, a forcing function which is sinusoid. And we have already derived the mathematical model and how to solve that uh, equation of motion. So, uh, let us see how we can solve some example. So, the first problem we are going to consider today, it is a portal frame. So, we have a portal frame. It is made of steel. So, there are two columns. So, one is here and another is there. So, these are the two columns you can see and then it is supporting a mass m and this mass is given. So, it is 5000 kilogram. Now, the column has a cross section with a moment of inertia i is equal to 1 5 0 0 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter to the power 4. So, that is the moment of inertia of the column. It is made of steel. Obviously, uh, we know the Young's modulus of steel that we will see in a minute. Now, the height of these columns, they are 3 meter and then this frame, it actually supports a machine. So, it supports a machine uh, that exerts a force in the horizontal direction and the magnitude of this force. So, f of t in these case is given. So, this is 60,000 sin then 12 t. So, the magnitude of this force you can see here it is in Newton. So, 60 kilo Newton force is exerted in the horizontal direction and it is a sinusoidal force. Obviously, the driving frequency you can see in this case is 12 radian per second and it is given that the critical damping ratio is 5 percent. Then our objective is to find out what should be the maximum steady state response. So, find out the maximum steady state response. Right. Now, Young's modulus obviously, if it is made of steel, it is 2.11 into 10 to the power 11 Newton per meter square. Okay. Now, from this information, our task is to find out maximum steady state response. What does it indicate? It is the amplitude of the response that we have to find out, right. So, let us solve the problem. We have a steel column. Obviously, the stiffness of the column, let it be k c in the horizontal direction, it is 
sorry there is no roller I just improve the boundary condition. So, this is hinge at the bottom. So, it will be 3 Ei by L cube. So, if that is the case obviously, we know the Young's modulus, we know the moment of inertia I and then the length of the column is 3 meter. So, 3 times 2.11 into 10 to the power 11 into 1500 times 10 to the power minus 7 divided by 3 meter column. So, it is 3 cube. Now, if we solve that, uh, we get the stiffness of each column in the horizontal direction. So, this is 351.67 into 10 to the power 4 Newton per meter. Obviously, we have two columns. So, the stiffness in the horizontal direction is 2 times the stiffness provided by the individual column. So, obviously, it will be 2 times 351.67 into 10 to the power 4. Let me put a multiplication sign here. So, the value is 703.3 into 10 to the power 4 Newton per meter. So, that is the effective stiffness in the horizontal direction. Now, the moment we evaluate effective stiffness in the horizontal direction for this frame and we know the mass it is supporting. So, we can easily evaluate the natural frequency. So, the natural frequency in this case is square root of k h divided by m. So, it is square root of 703.33 into 10 to the power 4 divided by the mass is 5000. And if we evaluate the natural frequency, it is 37.51. The unit is radian per second. Now, if we apply an initial condition and uh, just let the structure vibrate, obviously it will vibrate with a natural frequency of 37.51 radian per second. Now, in this case we drive the system with a harmonic excitation and for that harmonic excitation you can see the driving frequency is 12 radian per second, right. So, if that is the case we can find out frequency ratio that is the ratio of lambda by omega n. So, in this case lambda is 12 and the natural frequency is 37.51. So, obviously, the frequency ratio in this case is 0 0.32. What else we are given? The critical damping ratio. The moment we know the critical damping ratio and frequency ratio, we can find out what is dynamic magnification factor. This is mu. If you recall, the expression for dynamic magnification factor is square root of 1 minus r square whole square plus twice eta r whole square. Now, if I put the values of r and eta, so it will be 1 minus 0 0.32 square, then whole square plus 2 times critical damping ratio is 0 0.05 times 0 0.32 whole square. Now, if you find out this expression, you will see 1 by 0 0.898. Now, if you find out what is the dynamic 
magnification factor. So, it will be 1 divided by 0.898. So, it is 1.1136. So, that is the dynamic amplification we have in this case. Now, our task is to find out what is x max. That means, this is nothing but the dynamic magnification times the static deformation. So, in this case what we have is dynamic magnification is 1.1136 times our static deformation which in this case we can easily find out because we know the amplitude of external force divided by the effective stiffness in the horizontal direction which we have already evaluated. It is the stiffness offered by the two columns. So, it is 703.33 into 10 to the power 4. Now, if you find out this, you will get the effective deformation is in this case 9.5. Uh, this is in millimeter. So, that clearly tells us how to solve this frame when we excite this frame using a harmonic force with a driving frequency of 12 radian per second. Obviously, as the time progresses, this, this uh, frame will keep on vibrating in the horizontal direction with this amplitude and then because it is a linear system and we excite the system using a harmonic force, the response steady state response is also harmonic, it will have a phase lag. So, that harmonic response will have an amplitude which we have already evaluated, it is 9.5 millimeter. So, that is the first problem to show you how we can um, use the formulation we have derived in the previous lectures to solve a frame structure. So, let us move forward. Our example 2, in this example we have a beam. And this beam is massless, so neglect the weight of the beam. Obviously, in reality you have a mass of the beam that uh, we can also solve uh, as we progress, we may take that example, but for the time being we have a massless beam and it actually supports a machine at the center and this machine it actually rotates with a particular rpm and in this case it is rotating with 600 rpm. Now, the weight in this case is given. Now, this weight is again it is 5000 Newton and because of this weight there will be a vertical deformation. So, the static deformation is given this is 0 0.025 centimeter and also the damping is defined. So, C in this case is equal to 500 Newton for a velocity for a velocity 2.5 centimeter per second. So, the damping force 
is proportional to velocity and force is 500 Newton and it is proportional to it is measured at this is defined at this velocity. So, 2.5 centimeter per second. So, our task is determine dynamic magnification factor for this system. So, we will evaluate what is mu. Now, in this case what is lambda? We know this is 600 rpm. That means, we can convert that into radian per second. So, 600 divided by 60 and if you do that, you will get effectively 20 pi radian per second. So, that is the driving frequency and then we know mass of this I mean weight is given. So, we can calculate what is the mass and that is 5000 divided by 9.81. So, this is the mass of the system. So, it is 510.2 kilogram. Now, if you look at the problem statement, the beam it offers only the stiffness in the vertical direction. However, it is massless and it, if it has mass, then we have to add that mass to the mass it is supporting. So, for the time being, it is offering only stiffness. So, how to quantify that stiffness? We can easily do it if you look at the problem statement. So, delta static is what? It is actually the force applied on the system divided by the stiffness. So, what is the force? It is 5000. That is the force. And then the beam offers a stiffness and then if we solve this, what we get K is nothing but 5000 divided by the static deformation. In this case, it is 0 0.025. Notice that is in centimeters. So, you have to divide it by 100 and if you do that, you will get 20 into 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter. So, now we get the stiffness offered by the beam while supporting this rotating machine. Now, we know the stiffness, we know the mass. So, immediately what we can do? We can calculate what is the natural frequency. So, it is square root of k by m. So, if you put the values, so we have 20 into 10 to the power 6 divided by 510.2 square root of this quantity. And if you do that, you will get 198.0 or 198 radian per second. So, that is the natural frequency. Now, the moment we calculate natural frequency, so what we know now is the driving frequency and the natural frequency. So, the ratio of these two will be the frequency ratio. So, it is lambda by omega n. So, then if we do that, it is 20 pi divided by 198. And if you do that, you will find out the frequency ratio is again 0 0.32. Now, our task is to find out dynamic magnification factor. So, the expression 
for this dynamic magnification factor is 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 times eta r whole square. Now, if you look at the expression, we know the value of frequency ratio which is 0 0.32, but we do not know what is the critical damping ratio. So, that we can find out. So, what we know that C is defined by this statement which says 500 Newton of force corresponding to a velocity of 2.5 centimeter per second. So, that tells us what is C, C is 500 that is the force and then divided by the velocity in this case the velocity is given in centimeter per second. So, multiplied by 100 divided by um, 2.5. Then in this case, C is 20,000 Newton second per meter. So, that is C. Now, if you recall the expression of eta, this is nothing but C divided by twice m omega n. So, we know C now, this is 20 thousand divided by 2 times mass which is in this case 510.2 times omega n so which is 198 and therefore if you find out the critical damping ratio it is 0 0.099 so we can also write it 0 0.1 that is 10% now, once we know that, we can put all these expressions here. So, we have square root of 1 minus 0 0.32 square whole square plus 2 times 0 0.099. Let us put the exact value and then 0 0.32 whole square. And then if you solve this, we will get the dynamic magnification factor as 1.11. So, again we have uh, 11 percent increment from the static deformation. So, that is the dynamic magnification factor in this case. So, the second problem is solved and in this case again we have a massless beam. I repeat once more if you have if you consider the mass of the beam then you just need to add that mass here and then obviously if the mass increases what will happen this at this point mass will increase so that will reduce the natural frequency obviously if omega n is reduced what will happen its impact on frequency ratio frequency ratio will increase and whatever the value of the beam uh, its mass then if you add that and you can just find out the frequency ratio and accordingly you can find out the dynamic magnification factor. So, that is the second problem. Let us move forward. Let us consider a different problem. So, in this case what we have example 3. So, what we have is actually a platform supported by four springs right so there is a platform and then it is supported by four springs obviously it also offers some damping and then over this platform there is a vehicle. So, I just write, so just imagine this is the vehicle. So, it has a wheel here, there. So, the problem statement says an automobile 
whose weight is weight is 150 kg is mounted on four springs. and it sags by 0 0.23 meter. Obviously, these four springs, they are identical springs and the CG of this vehicle is exactly uh, over the CG of the supporting structure. Now, again in this case, each shock, these are actually shock absorbers. I am not drawing the damper here, but obviously it has some damping property. So, each shock absorber has a damping coefficient zero point four Newton for a velocity of three centimeter per second. Now, the car moves vertically at resonance with an amplitude of 1 centimeter. So, find the amplitude of vibration. Okay. So, let us see how we can solve this. First thing what we can notice is uh, the automobile is actually over the shock absorbers and if you recall we earlier actually solved a problem we will use that results. If you cannot recall, I just remind you. So, if you have a spring and then it is supporting a weight w and then from this equilibrium position, if we just release it. So, what will happen? It will just come to this uh, position and then obviously, it will also vibrate. So, this is the static deformation and on top of static deformation, you will have some dynamic oscillation. Now, for this problem actually, we derived the expression which we are going to use. So, that is the stiffness and in that case, we actually derived what is the natural frequency. So, the natural frequency in this case is square root of g by. So, in this case, uh, we know the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 divided by the static deformation you can see it is given that is 0 0.23. Now, if you cannot uh, remember this expression please uh, refer our previous class notes and then you will get this uh, derivation. We have already done it. 
So, the natural frequency in this case is 6.53 radian per second. Now, let me just write down this expression. Uh, the frequency for this system actually we derived it is 1 by 2 pi square root of k g by w and then if you further simplify you can show that it is 1 by 2 pi square root of uh, g by uh, your static deformation. So, this result we have uh, used here in this problem. Obviously, this f in hertz, so uh, in radian per second it will be square root of g by the static deformation that is what we have used here. Now, let us also quantify c in the same way we did earlier. So, in our case it is 0 0.4 and there are 4 shock absorbers divided by the velocity which in this case 0 0.03 meter per second because the unit is in centimeter. So, we have to convert that into SI unit. So, if you do that you will get this is the expression is 53.33 again unit is Newton second per meter. Now, if you look at the problem statement, what it says that the platform platform vibrates with an amplitude of say x naught. Obviously, what will be the spring extension? It is x minus x naught and then sin lambda t. Now, if we write down the equation of motion in this case, it will be m x double dot plus c times we have to differentiate this quantity. So, it will be x naught minus we have x naught lambda cos lambda t plus k times x minus x naught sin lambda so, let us use a different bracket here. This is equal to 0. Now, if you simplify this expression, what you get is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to c x naught lambda cos lambda t plus k x naught sin lambda t. Obviously, we can combine this expression. So, we can write down this in a more compact form. So, this is c x naught lambda whole square plus k x naught whole square times sin lambda t minus theta. So, what we have in this case is a system which is driven by a harmonic excitation if you can see on the right hand side. What is the amplitude of this force? If not this is square root of C x naught lambda whole square plus k x naught whole square square root of that quantity. Now, let me just erase this part. So, 
at resonance again we have derived the expression in our last lecture what should be the value of mu and uh, r. So, if you recall r for resonance is square root of 1 minus twice eta square. Now, from the given information we can easily find out what is eta. So, we know what is c. So, in this case 53.33 divided by twice 150 that is mass and then twice m omega n. So, this is 6.53. So, if you evaluate you will get this is 0 0.027. Obviously, corresponding um, r value is 0 0.999. Now, look at this value r is not exactly equal to 1, but very close to 1. And if you recall, we discussed this in detail that resonance occurs just in the vicinity of uh, 1, but it is on the left hand side. So, it is less than 1. And you can see the value here also. It is very close to 1, but not exactly 1. And then at this value, we will have the maximum dynamic magnification factor. So, what next? So, what we can do? We know what is x naught, right? Because it is given. So, the vertical amplitude, so x naught is equal to 0 0.01 meter. Now, if you look at this expression for force, its amplitude f naught, we know c, we know x naught, we know lambda and then our task is to find out what is this k value. So, what is k? k we can find it out, it is 150 into 9.81 divided by 0 0.2. 3. So, that is the force causing a deformation so of 0.23. So, if you find out this will be 6397.83 Newton per meter. And then we can use these values and find out what is the value of f naught. So, f naught you can put all these expressions if you do that I just give you the value you just do it yourself it will be 64.06 Newton. Now, obviously, we know r which is 0.999. So, we know omega n. So, we can easily find out lambda. So, this is nothing but r times omega n. So, try this at your end and you will basically get this uh, value of uh, f naught which is the amplitude of the force and the moment we do that we can find out what is x amplitude. So, in this case it will be the force exerted. So, this is 64.06 divided by c times your omega. So, c is in our case 53.33 times this is 6.53 and if you do that calculation you will get 0 0.184 meter. So, which is equal to 18.4 centimeter. So, that completely solves the problem and from the given information we have evaluated the amplitude of vibration the moment we put the automobile over these four shock absorbers whose properties are given. 
Now, the main trick is here at this step, at this step where we derive the equation of motion in this problem and you can see how we can use the dynamics of the system the way it is defined and then modify the equation of motion and find out the forcing function and ultimately that helps us to evaluate the amplitude of vibration which in this case is 18.4 centimeter. So, with these three problems uh, you now see how we can actually use the mathematical models that we have developed for force vibration of an established system and then uh, those expressions uh, we can use to evaluate the problems uh, when we have uh, in reality this kind of shock absorbers or beams or frames and they are experiencing some kind of harmonic force and we can easily use the concept of dynamic magnification factor to evaluate its uh, dynamic response. As we progress we will see how we can bring in other type of forces. As of now we have applied only constant force and harmonic force, but we will see how we can extend that and bring in other type of forces and develop the models for that. So, with that let us close here today, we will continue on this topic. Thank you very much. Thank you.